I know that I'm cheating on you. So you come and say, oh, why are you cheating on me? You cheated on me. Yes, I cheated on you and I know that I cheated on you. Being abused emotionally really messes with you. I was actually dealing with a narcissist at that point. He's a very good looking man. So it's only totally natural that girls will gravitate towards him. You're only going to be the foolish person in court. You're going to be the foolish person trying to make excuses for other people's actions. If I call him once, he did not pick. And the second time I should drop a text. After that, I should not call him or text him anymore. He needs his space. He needs his... I should not be calling and texting him. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> and today i'm going to be giving you guys a story time i love doing story time on my channel i feel like i'm a new storyteller what do you guys think anyways i'm going to be telling you guys another story but before i tell you guys this story today i genuinely want to ask a question from the bottom of my heart because i feel like this keeps bothering me and i feel like if i do not ask this question it's going to keep nagging and i just want to just you know ask it out there and hopefully i get an answer to the question so each time i check my youtube studio i realize that 80 percent of you guys are not subscribed and it's a whole lot it's not it's not like just a few people it's a whole lot of people if i get like 100 views on my story it's like 80 people watching that video they are not subscribed so it really bothers me and it really gets to me because it's like why are they not subscribing to my channel like they keep coming back it's not like just one time that they watch and they just leave it's like each video that i post they come back to watch and watch and watch and they just don't hit the subscribe button so i keep asking like why are they not subscribed is it that they don't like me or they don't like my channel they don't want me to grow they just don't care you know it's just a whole lot of things like do i need to promote more do i need to do more is it i don't know because I, I don't know i don't know i don't know what else to do so i'm really hoping like i will get an answer to this and it could also be a thing where people are not aware that they're not subscribed like you know it's just like oh it's what i know i watch her, but they just don't even know that they're not subscribed so i really do hope this will be like a wake up call like you know just to hit the subscribe button it's just like a button like right below the video it's written subscribe all you need to do is just click on it like it's very simple and it's going to make me really happy because i mean subscribers but i mean i am <laughs> anyways guys today i'm going to be having a story time on my channel as usual and this story time is going to be a little bit different not a lot but just a little bit different from the other story time that i've done in the past because the last story time that i did i got like really positive response from people and you know i got like a couple of messages from people saying how they appreciated me coming out to see my side of the story because some of them are currently going through a similar situation and me posting that story time kind of helped them it was a kind of wake up call on how to navigate on that type of situation and i for me i was only posting it for the entertainment for the entertainment part of it honestly i didn't really think anybody could learn anything from it but i got like a couple of messages from people saying oh they really like you know that story time kind of helped them you know they just said like positive things about the story time so i felt like okay each time I want to post story times, I would post them and I would see the lessons that I learned from them and how those experiences helped me to become who I am today, you feel me? So yeah, this story time that I'm going to get into is about how I was about how i was abused emotionally and mentally i was not abused physically i don't think there's anybody that abused me physically on this earth like are you okay what are you doing <laughs> but yeah uh emotionally and i feel like being abused emotionally really messes with you because it breaks you down in a in a way that it takes a whole lot of time to heal from it's really crazy and i was abused emotionally and also mentally and i want to before i get into like the details of the story time i want to first talk about certain things that you know would help before you get into any form of relationship be it friendship romantic relationship work relationship church relationship whatever type of relationship you get into with another human being i i believe every everybody should be self-aware even if you're not getting into any relationship you should be self-aware and when i say self-awareness is like knowing yourself like this is me this is my flaws this is where i'm lacking this is where i need to work on this these are the things that i like these are the things that i don't like you should just know what you embody you should know yourself you should like reflect a lot on yourself you should know yourself as a person and i believe if you're self-aware it helps you filter a lot of things it helps you understand yourself better and how to it also helps you to 
okay this is me this is how i function this is how i operate so it also helps you understand your taste in people like okay this is my type of person and i feel like i work well with this type of people as well but if you don't really know yourself there's going to be a lot of mishaps in relationship you get into with people because you don't even know yourself you don't you don't know where you're coming from and if you're self-aware it also helps you to put boundaries in place it helps you set up boundaries like okay me i am is why i have certain things like for example i don't like when people shout at me so it's like it helps you put boundaries in place like if in any relationship i'm getting into be it friendship be it relationship work relationship whatever type of relationship if anybody should raise their voices at me i need to put them in their place and tell them i don't need to be rude about it i, I just tell them i do not like when people shout at me like you can talk to me i'm right in front of you so it's like it helps you put boundaries in place it helps you understand yourself better and put boundaries in place as to how to navigate and live life with other people peacefully you get and also understanding yourself being self-aware helps you know your negotiables and your non-negotiables it helps you know like okay if i am in a relationship with my partner and we get into like an argument and my partner slaps me for me that's a deal breaker i am leaving and it also helps you understand like you're compromisable like oh if i am in a relationship with someone and they don't respond my text back quickly it's all right cool i'll give them like it's not that deep i can compromise that so it's like it helps you have like compromisables and non-compromisable you have like a table like okay for me these things i won't take them and for me these things it's okay i can let them pass in friendship in work relationship in any type of relationship so being self-aware really helps you to become like a a very exposed person because it helps you to you know just have setting standards in place basically yeah and this story time that i want to tell you guys like when i got into this relationship with this person i was not self-aware i didn't know anything about myself i self-discovery zero self-awareness zero i was naive i did not know a lot of things i was not exposed i was just there like all i knew was that i liked this person i was attracted to this person this person asked me out i'm attracted to them i like them so yeah why not like i see no reason as to why not to go out with them because i like them basically it's that simple nothing i did not even know what it was to be in a relationship i did not know like there, there were sacrifices to be made i did not really know i did not really know the this whole concept back then so that all i knew was that i liked this person they liked me they asked me out and they said yes it's that simple nothing crazy that's it all i knew was that i wanted to spend time with them and outside of that nothing else so yeah not being self-aware actually led me into a lot of mediocre uh, experiences and that's what is going to happen to you if you do not know who you are if you do not have boundaries in place if you do not have standards standards in place you're going to go through very below bar experiences trust me so yeah this person i was dating this person and you know i would not say we were cool because i let a lot of things slide but because i did not even know boundaries back then i, I just keep letting things slide and there's a saying that whatever you allow is what you continue if you do not put people in their place the first time they try something with you it's just going to be like it's not allowed it so why not i'm going to continue it the first time you came into my house and you play with me you're like oh you're stupid and i just laughed it over the next time you're going to repeat it also as a joke you're stupid you're going to keep repeating it over and over like each time you're joking like you're stupid you're stupid because i keep allowing it and going to keep continuing it's that simple that is how life works so yeah i was listening to this person and there were a lot of things that happened in the relationship that made me really uncomfortable and i it's now that i'm understanding why i was uncomfortable i was uncomfortable because my boundaries were being overstepped they were being broken they were being tampered with but back then i didn't know that this person was crossing my boundaries so i just all i knew was that i was uncomfortable with this with certain things in the relationship but now i understand better why i was uncomfortable so yeah i was it i'm dating i'm with this person i'm going to give like an example and i think the night before we had like an argument or something and he texted me and he was like oh can i come to school the next day he needs to talk to me and i told him you know i don't have classes I, there's no reason for me to be on campus and stuff like that but it was like oh he needed to talk to me can i please come so we can just talk about this thing we work it out and i'm like all right cool so the next day i got i got dressed i went to school and the way the campus is set is kind of like where we have classes there are a lot of classes obviously but it's like our uh, first floor and second floor so yeah this guy I, I got to school before him i'm sorry guys this story happened a while back so like my memory of the story is a little bit like blurred so I'm, but i'm going to try to be as coherent as possible so yeah this person i got to school i got to school earlier than they do so i just went to like the second floor classroom because it's like a little bit quiet over there so i was just there i had like my earphones plugged in i was working on something and i waited like maybe 30 minutes later this person still hasn't arrived so i'm like oh, why is this person like you know what's up 
I probably left a text or like a call, but I didn't get any response. So I was like, okay, maybe they're on their way or something. You know, it's not that deep. I was just like working and I realized that like, I got too deep in my work. By the time I remember the kids, like maybe probably an hour has passed. I'm like, okay, I've been here for like an hour. This guy told me to come here. Where is he? So then I went to the first floor, like the second floor where all the classrooms are. And, you know, I was, you know, basically just trying to look around like, okay, where is he? Is he here? Did he arrive already? And I happened to enter one of the classrooms and lo and behold, there was this guy. This guy was there. And it was in the midst of, it was in the midst of like, uh, maybe two to three girls. There were three or four girls surrounding him. I don't really know. I can't really remember the amount of girls. But all I know was that he was there and there were like a couple of girls surrounding him. And he had like his phone or like his tablet. And he was showing them something on the tablet. They were swiping and scrolling through something. I don't really know what. But they were all laughing and giggling. I don't know if they were watching a video or reading a tweet god knows what i don't know i just entered the classroom i opened the door to the classroom i got into the classroom all i saw was him and a couple of girls surrounding him and they were all laughing and it, i felt really really uncomfortable because not because it was with girls and laughing far from that i felt uncomfortable because i did not i have no reason being in this building today i left my house i got dressed early in the morning to come here to see you because you told me to come here you got here now you did not look for me you did not bother to look for me like okay i'm here to meet this one you did not even bother to check like okay where is this girl that i told to come here you you just wear her head to go and sit with a bunch of girls and you were laughing and you guys were doing whatnot like what the heck that was the way i felt but i did not really know that i was being disrespected back then it was just like what is this person doing and why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? Like, I could not really pinpoint what I was feeling the way I was feeling. I did not know that I was feeling like that because I was, I was disrespected. I just felt uncomfortable with the whole situation. But I could not really say, I could not really speak it out. Because, you know, there are times when you're feeling something that you cannot put them into words. Because you yourself, you know, you've not really understood that feeling that you're feeling. So I could not really say it out there like, okay, this is what I'm feeling. Because I myself did not really understand what I was feeling. I just felt disrespected. But I did not know that I was being disrespected. So... I, I left the classroom. He saw me obviously when I entered. I, I went back upstairs. So in my head I was like, okay, this person is going to follow suit and we're going to talk when we get upstairs. So I went back to the second classroom and waiting for this nigga to walk through the door so we could talk. He did not come. The, I, I waited like five minutes, ten minutes. This guy did not come. You clearly saw me when I came to the he, he did not follow me. I was like, okay. I went back downstairs. He was still there playing the whatever I'm thinking on the tablet with these girls. I was like, huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't know what I was supposed to do because, yo, I don't know what I was supposed to do. So I just went back upstairs quietly, like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to wait peacefully. Let him finish whatever he, it is that he's doing and he's going to come upstairs. So I waited like probably like 30 minutes more, 45 minutes more. I don't really know how many minutes or hours passed. I just waited quietly. And then I think I had, I have an added with waiting. So I went downstairs, like, okay, where the heck is this guy? I have other things planned. This is me going downstairs now. It was no longer in that classroom. So I was like, uh, where is he? So I asked, like, you know, I saw, like, a group of his friends hanging somewhere. So I asked them, like, oh, have you seen him? Where did he go? They were like, oh, he left already. He went back home. He said he didn't have anything else to do. So he went back home. <laughs> you know that, <laughs> you know, if the, you know the, those cartoon where things come out from your ears? That was me. Because I was like, he went back. He went back home. Why? What? He, he told me to come here. I came here because of him. And then he did not bother. Like, he did not even bother to check on me. It... <sighs> Guys, I know you're listening to this story and you're also like, it's not making sense. That's the way I also felt like it's not making any freaking sense. So, obviously, there was nothing left for me to do. I just packed my books and also went back home. And now I'm like, you know what? I'll get to him and I'll talk to this guy and ask him why he did that because it's not making any sense. And, you know, I got home and, you know, I was talking to him about it, like, you know, the me now, like, the current is what I would have been like, the egg, how did you disrespect me like that? You know, I would have gone straight to the point, telling him what he did and how I felt, but the back then me was beating around the bush, like, oh, you told me to come to school. I see me did not know what he did. I'm telling him what he did again, like, oh, you told me to come to school. I came to school and then you went down. The new is I would have told you straight up what, like... I'm not going to take that from you. That is very disrespectful. But then I was just beating around the bush. And I don't know, maybe he saw it as me being, you know, I don't know whatever he saw it as, but he took advantage of that. And then it was like, oh, it's my responsibility because, you know, he's a very attractive man. 
no no i'm not disputing the fact it's very good looking yeah it's like oh he's very he's a very good looking man so it's only totally natural that girls will gravitate towards him and they will always want to talk to him and it's my responsibility when i see other girls trying to talk to him it's my responsibility to fight for his attention because i'm not the only person trying to get his attention yo we're already together i did not ask you out. you came to me you say you liked me it's not like i was following you around you were the one that you begged me to date you now you're telling me that i have to fight for your attention with other girls because you are the odds thinking the, the whatever whatever i think you are so i have to fight other girls to get your attention so if we go out if we had a function or like an event and other guys are to other girls are talking to you and i don't feel comfortable with it it's my responsibility to drag you out there and tell other girls not to talk to you you know basically it was basically just telling me that i have to fight for his attention i have to compete with other girls to get his attention and even though i know that that makes zero sense that that is just a plain narcissist behavior but then i didn't even know that there was a word like narcissism trust me i didn't even know all of these things so yeah when they said that a part of me Loki knows that this guy is bullshitting but like the dominant part of me was like oh i think he's saying the truth because you know he's really good looking and he can't really help his girls are caught to him to talk to him so it's only really normal for me to you know try to protect what is mine da -da 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 -da, da -da -da -da. and i was even making a mental note like oh i have to you know tell the girls not to <sighs> thank god i never did that yo that's one thing i've never done in my life tell all that girls not to talk to my mind ah you can have him please I don't want him anyways that was what he said to me then and the fact that i even considered for a moment that oh i have to fight for this man I have to fight for his attention just shows how i lack self-awareness and boundaries and i do not know when to tell people to stop because back then i should have told this person you were sick in the head you're a freaking narcissist and you're not going to play that game with me pack yourself and leave but then it's like i did not really know i was even the fact that i even considered to do the things he was telling me to do just shows how being self-aware will save you from a lot of things having boundaries in place having high standard will save you from a lot of bullshit now i know better and i really hope that if you're going through this in this similar situation you have boundaries in place to let people know that you are not the one to mess with let them carry their bullshit and go like there are others out there that will literally do anything to meet your standards so if somebody is trying to make you lower your standard tell them to leave okay if you're getting abused or gaslighted or manipulated in a certain situation you really would not understand you really would not know that this person is gaslighting you or manipulating you unless you step out of that situation or you take a step back and you see the old pattern and you're like Oh, I'm actually being messed with. I'm actually being manipulated. I'm actually being toyed with. You would not really know if you're still in that situation. You're like actively in that mix. You would not really see what is going on. And a good example of this is uh we had this other friend, a girl, and you know, she was celebrating her birthday, and she clearly said it was strictly by invite, and she told all of us coming to this thing in like it's a uh, it's a couple kind of thing basically it's a type of party that you come with your own entertainment we come you come with your own person if you do not have a boyfriend or a girlfriend you you cannot come to the party or unless you're okay with being alone which basically does not make sense so basically it's a type of party where you go in pairs you go with your partner because the host is not going to entertain you she's not going to play games with you or whatever she's just going to do her own thing with her partner so you come to the party with your own partner they're going to provide you with food and everything but everybody will just be in their corner doing their own thing and that's the theme of the party and you know she clearly said it out to everybody that wanted to come to the party and you know i asked him like what well, do you want to go to the party like our friend is celebrating her birthday it was a pool party kind of thing but you come with your partner and you know i he also it was there clearly like when the girl was saying everything so it was like yeah it's not like it, that sounds like fun because you know that's like a new idea like everybody come with their partner and you know because everybody seems to be hanging out with their people so you hang out with your own person so i was like do you want to go to this function this event this thing in it's like yeah sure cool that sounds fun and i'm like all right so the night before the function i remember i was very preoccupied because my dad was sick i had to run some errands and you know i was under pressure i was worried he also had like some errands to run stuff like that basically sure so this guy i called him i called him the night before the uh, the party and i asked him how are we getting there you know are we going together are we going separately what time should we leave what time should we get there you know all of those details and it was like oh he has like a prior engagement he needs to get something done first so he thinks he's going to go to free he's going to go to the party from 
the prior engagement it needs to get something done and i'm like all right cool i also have some errands to run i'll run my errands and then from there i'll be get to the party so that was what we concluded and then the day came you know i got dressed and all that and while i was in the uber while i was about to leave the house i had called him i was like oh i'm dressed and you know i'm leaving now i'm going to the party like are you also like getting dressed like are you on your way he's like yeah it's just left, like this prior engagement is going to get like a uber now to you know get him from like where it is to like the party and i'm like all right cool i got my car i was in my car like maybe when i was like 10 minutes away from like the place i texted him and i was like you know not even texted i called him we spoke on the phone i was like oh i'm like 10 minutes away like how are you like you know where are you and stuff like that so he's like oh he's like you know about to get a car as well he's going to be there in like maybe 10 minutes because it's not really far from where he is and i'm like all right cool so when because it's like a pool party it was like in a hotel you have to pay like entrance fee and some stuff like that so i remember like at the entrance because he said it was going to be there in like 10 minutes so i i paid my gate fee and i also paid his gate fee and i showed like the security man like his picture like well this person is going to be here like in a couple of minutes just letting in i already paid and stuff like that so this is me now after i paid i just went to the lobby and i went to sit at the lobby and you know i just texted him like you know i'm waiting for you at the lobby waiting like okay this person will be here in a couple of minutes so i was just basically chilling there and then 10 minutes 20 minutes later there was nothing from this guy so i called him like yo where are you you know i'm, I'm here I'm waiting it's been a couple of minutes now he didn't pick the call so that was strange because you know we we're talking like all through while i was in the car so i called him some more and some more and some more i think at that point i've called him like maybe five to six times he was not picking he was not responding my text my text so i was like okay if something happens to this guy is this safe did he have like because you know i was thinking also so at that point i'm like okay because we're talking like everything was cool so all of a sudden what's going on so i called him and i called him and i called him some more he was not picking at that point i was getting really worried like okay uh okay what well, is going on and then my friend the celebrant she had come to the lobby she's like oh it's over right in here come to the party and i'm like oh i'm waiting for this person to arrive and she's like all right cool they are at the poolside they're waiting for me i can just come join them at the poolside when i'm ready and i'm like all right cool so i waited some more and some more and i called some more and some more and some more there was no response there was nothing so i'm like okay I just need to head into this party i can't keep waiting at the pool and just like my friend said when i got into the party when i got into the party everybody was in twos everybody nobody was talking to anybody everybody was just in their corner doing their thing there was just like a table of food you get your food and then you go it was so sad and embarrassing like i literally just got like a plate of food and i just sat in one corner alone on my phone and i just kept texting like yo i'm here where are you yo why you know picking up you know all of those things are you okay Did something happened no response it was not picking my call and then after i waited like probably like an hour at the party i just told the girl that you know i was leaving because i don't think this person is going to show up so now when i got home it was late and because you know i i have like his family's contact i talked to like his dad his mom his brother and stuff like that like his siblings so i called like his older brother because i think i'm closer to his older brother so i called him and i'm like yo like is it because he was living with his older brother at the time so i called his older brother and i was like oh like is it okay like when i even called the other brother he thought i wanted because usually when i'm not able to reach him i call the other brother and then he's like he gives him the phone for me so when i called the other brother i was I'm like oh do you want me to give him the phone like he's in the room playing video games so when the other brother was like he's in the room playing video games that literally gave me all the answers that i need like oh this guy is actually very okay nothing happens to him the fact that he's in his house playing video games because i know once he plays video games he's going to go to bed so he's getting ready to go to bed nothing is wrong with him he did not call me he did not say anything no explanation nothing he's just everything he's just acting as if everything is all right so i just said this brother like oh no it's cool it's all right no like i don't need to talk to him i was just checking in and stuff and then the next day i went to school he came to school and you know i saw him in school clearly i was mad i did not say anything to him i was i was i was mad all i knew was that i was furious at this person and i never know like the reason i was so mad was because i was so disrespected and this person did not acknowledge my feelings whatsoever they disregarded me but i did not understand that i just knew that i was mad at this person and i didn't say anything to him because i was mad he also saw me he did not say anything to me so all through like the school day he did not say anything when the school was over and everybody was going home you know classes were done we're rounding up like the last class for the day lectures are over everybody's going home now at this point then he put me to the side and then he's like oh can you have a word with me and i'm like all right speak let me hear what you want to say and he's like oh guys i knew that i knew nothing was wrong with this person because i spoke to his other brother last night i knew he was okay so clearly i know like nothing happened to this person i know that in my head but when i started talking to this person i remember everything this guy said this guy was like 
you're such a selfish person you're a very terrible person we're supposed to meet yesterday and i did not show up you're not worried you're not checking up on me you're just acting as if everything is okay you saw me in school today you never bothered to check if i had died if something happened to me and you know it was just going on and on and on and on about how i'm a bad person how i don't care about him how he could have died something fatal could have happened to him but all i care about is myself i'm such a selfish person i'm too much in my head you know it kept going on and on and on about how i'm a terrible person and you know at that point guys i knew very well that nothing happened to this guy this guy is okay he played video games before bed last night i know that very well but at that point in time guys i literally believed that i was selfish i saw sense in what he was saying i saw a reason in what he was saying and i agreed with what he was saying even though i knew that this guy was okay but for some reason i believe that this guy is actually saying the truth that i'm a selfish person because something could have actually happened to him even though nothing happened to him that was his point his point was that even though nothing happened to me something could have happened to me and you're a selfish person for getting angry because of that because they could have actually been in trouble and i actually saw sense in what he was saying don't ask me how but i saw sense in what he was saying <sighs> This is why before you get into any relationship, you need to understand the concept of gaslighting and manipulating because people would gaslight you to your face even though you are aware of gaslighting and you will not know that you're being gaslighted. It is crazy. So this guy went on and on about how I'm selfish and this and that, da 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 and you know started feeling apologetic and remorseful and i was saying oh i'm sorry like you know next time i'll try to be more careful i'll try to check in more da, 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 and then i asked him okay something could have happened fine but nothing happened so what exactly happened to you why didn't you show up so it was like yeah it was it was about to book his car but then his phone fell and the screen broke so he started to kind of fix like the screen of the phone before coming to the party and then he just went to fix his phone screen and he totally forgot about the party and then he just went home that was it that was what he said to my face y'all <laughs> and guys that's the truth but in that point in that moment even till today i feel like i would have lucky appreciated if he lied to me to make me feel like oh i'm important like you know any sort of all that thinking aside from i forgot and i just went home that felt i felt so small so important so uh, i don't know <laughs> it's such a terrible feeling like and he literally just said it so nonchalantly he said it like yeah i just forgot and i went home and the way he said it was that it's not a big deal rather you should be apologetic and you know feel bad about yourself because you're a third person that did not check on me and i had no rights to be angry not like i had no rights to be angry but i did i didn't i didn't even know at that point that i should be angry at what he was saying i Yo, I feel like you need to really know what you're getting into before you get into anything because if you don't, you're going to lose yourself, your sense of self and you're just going to become a shadow of yourself and people will just, they'll just mess with you, they'll just play with you like, and at that point, I did not even know that it was a word like narcissism or narcissist, it's just now, like in recent time that I'm understanding like we was actually a narcissist, this person actually is the is obsessed with the way he looks is obsessed everything has to be about him i have to worship him i have to what i do not know all of that it's not that i'm understanding like oh i was actually dealing with a narcissist at that point he was gaslighting me back to back to back and you know in to even like it, this guy decided to even make the situation worse do you know what this guy told me after the old bullshit about him forgetting the old function he said oh after he got his phone back he saw that he had a couple of missed calls and he just wants to put it out there but like after i call if i call him once he did not pick and the second time i should drop a text after that i should not call him or text him anymore he needs his space needs, i should not be calling and texting him i should just call him once and text him and that's it and i'm like hey <laughs> back then i did not really understand like oh guys i did not really understand but it's just now that i'm like what <laughs> if a nigga says that to my face now you're gonna be blocked like you'll be blocked and deleted and you're just dead because this guy said that to my face that oh he's, he's probably busy doing things and he's probably busy playing video games so i should just call him once he does not have time to be not picking my calls all the time the, the call the phone ringing is stopping him i was and you know at that point you know the way this guy made me feel the way he painted me to myself was that oh you are a clingy person and you call too much and if i don't call or check in and it becomes oh you don't care about me 
so it, basically i was just never enough whatever i do was never going to be enough for this person is going to keep messing with my emotions and because i did not know who i was at that point i should know myself enough like oh i'm clingy or i'm not clingy when i'm in a relationship but because i didn't even know that about myself whatever this person says about me goes like if it says i'm clingy then i'm clingy because i don't even know if it says i'm not clingy then i'm not because i don't even know myself that like i feel like all the things that i went through in this relationship just keeps coming back to me not being self-aware me not understanding a lot of things before going into thing in, before going into a relationship so you need to really know what you're getting into before you actually get into the things you're getting into people know what they're doing that is one thing i have come to learn like I've, that's one thing i have come to learn even like in recent time even though i know this thing already that People know what they're doing. People keep showing me like they know what they're doing. So you're just wasting your time telling people that, oh, you did this to me, you did that to me because people know what they're doing. If I come into a room and I slap you and I don't say anything about it, do you want to tell me that I don't know that I slapped you? Of course I know that I slapped you. So you come to tell me that, oh, it's what you slapped me. I know that I slapped you. I did the action. That I, I did that action by myself. So I know that I slapped you. So you telling me that I slapped you is not going to change anything because I know that I slapped you already. So it's like, people know what they're doing it's you're only going to be the foolish person in court you're going to be the foolish person trying to make excuses for other people's action if i am cheating on you if i am abusing you emotionally physically whatever if i'm messing with you playing games with you i know what i'm doing i know that i'm playing games with you i know that i'm messing with you i know that i'm making you uncomfortable i know that i'm cheating on you so you come and say oh why are you cheating on me you cheated on me yes i cheated on you and i know that i cheated on you so it's like you telling people or you trying to make excuses for people is only going to make you appear more foolish and more easier to play with to the people that are playing with you actually it was the other brother that actually introduced me to him like i knew the other brother other brother before i knew him the other brother introduced us that's why i'm actually very close to the other brother so i remember like the other brother called me once and it was like he wants to have like a discussion with me and i'm like all right sure what's up and he's like he really likes me like he sees me as his younger sister and like he he knows that i'm a good person that's why he introduced me to his younger brother but in as much as this person is his younger brother he still sees me as his younger sister and he's not just going to keep watching his brother take advantage of me he's just going to you know try and tell me things so basically what the other brother told me was that you know this is the younger brother and you know they talk they have that guy stuff and stuff like that and you know he has seen the way the younger brother treats me and the way he talks to me and the way you know he makes me feel and stuff like that and you know he's, he's like i'm also very close to him when things happen i tell him my boy your brother did this and he's like he's seen me cry over this guy he's seen me go through hell with this guy and he just wanted to tell me like to leave his younger brother like he knows like i'm a good person and he wants me to be with his younger brother but he feels like his younger brother is not de deserving of me because he has seen the way the younger brother treats me and last night they were having a conversation which is why he's actually even telling me to leave his younger brother he made a statement last night when they were having a conversation and he felt like his younger brother is a piece of shit his younger brother said to him that i think he was telling his younger brother like oh why do you treat this girl like that whatever and then he told his younger brother like is this what whatever i do she's never going to leave no matter how much i mess with this girl no matter how much i gaslight her no matter how much i insult her put her down embarrass her humiliate her she's never going to leave me why because she loves me too much and she believes in my world i have made her believe that i am everything and no matter what i do to her she's never going to leave he said that to his younger to his elder brother and then his elder brother obviously was like this guy is a piece of shit <laughs> so the older brother came to me and was telling me that this is what my brother said and my brother is good like he said that while they were playing game he was he said it's so nonchalant and like ah, that babe she's not going to leave so his other brother was like if you think you're going through hell right now with my brother this is just the tip of the iceberg because you've allowed it it's going to continue and he knows what he's doing he knows he's playing with you he knows he's messing with you and he knows that you're not going to leave him so he's going to keep doing those things to you over and over and over he knows what he's doing and you're going to only be the foolish person to keep staying in this relationship without leaving the other brother said that to me and you know i don't know what me <laughs> i don't know what i was thinking i mean if the elder brother could say leave i don't know maybe i thought i 
was going to marry this guy god forbid i don't know what i was thinking even after the other brother said that to me i was still trying to see sense like okay at least that's a step in a good direction he knows that he's doing something wrong he just needs to change like the things he's doing now and then everything will go back to being okay we won't have problems in the relationship i feel like at that point the other brother just looked at me and felt like you are really okay <laughs> he did not say that but now that i remember the look on his face he's probably just saying that ah, poor child you're really hopeless my brother will keep messing with you <laughs> anyways like after the other brother said that to me i still did not leave the relationship to be honest like yeah i still did not leave sadly i was still being messed with i was still being told with and guys i did not even know how the relationship ended because it's it's just a series of toxicity like it's something that you keep leaving and coming back into like you leave you come back into you go back into you leave it comes you apologize you go it, it was just a series of back and forth back and forth it was really toxic it was really it was messy like i don't I, at some point i just felt like we all we both just blocked ourselves and we just stopped talking to ourselves honestly like i felt like that's just the way the relationship ended and it's been like a couple of years since we last spoke but i remember like early this year i just got like a random dm on instagram and it was this guy he does not even use instagram he had created a page on instagram just to dm me because apparently he had, i had blocked him everywhere that's how this guy reached out to me on instagram and then it was like <sighs> i'm telling you what you allow is what will continue so the image this guy still has of me is that docile obedient never no boundary is so at that whatever he says goes this after many years of us not talking and the way we had even ended was so rubbish this guy reached out to me on instagram and he's like hey i've been texting your whatsapp and not replying did you block me and i'm like yes i blocked you he's like go on and block me right now and i'm like uh-huh because <laughs> i mean that's the way he talks to me so it's only and immediately he says that my I'm supposed to run and go and unblock him because that is the normal thing. So when he said go and unblock me right now, I just laugh because you know I'm different. Like that's rubbish. But you know the funny thing is that I actually unblocked him. Like I wanted to see, I actually just wanted to play the games with him. So I also went and unblocked him. Like I'm still the same stupid this far. So I unblocked him and then he texted me on WhatsApp and then he's like, Oh yeah, why did you block me? How did you block me? It was just going on and on and on and on. And after I finished typing everything he just wanted to say, I just sent one funny sticker like that and then I just blocked him. I don't even know why I did that. Actually, I even just left his ass on Instagram, but I was just like, I don't know, it's been years and the fact that he's still, he's still the same, like it's 2023 and you're still like that, you're still, you're still immature, you're still a narcissist, I don't even know you're watching this video, you're still trash basically, you're still, ugh, it's a shame, I can't believe I was ever involved with him i just blocked him i just left him there on whatsapp and this guy even i remember like even after that he texted me with some number on whatsapp and he was still shouting at me how oh, dare you you're full of yourself you're shit yeah i was just like good riddance good riddance god save me from this guy anyways you i don't really know i feel like i tried to be as coherent as possible because this story happened a while back and I hope that you guys learned a thing or two from this story time i hope it's not just for the entertainment and you guys just listen to the embarrassing moments i hope like you learned a thing or two like you know being so far away before you go into any form of relationship and yeah but that's all i do i'm going to end this video here i'm going to be signing out and i just want to remind you guys before i sign out that please give this video a thumbs up and the ultimate <laughs> subscribe <laughs> subscribe subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video all right ciao ciao